Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. Once you put away your phones and your computers and all that we have nowadays, that's yeah, great, we're up to date, but your brain is the only thing you have when you're going through depression, hard times, you're going through death, real life shit. You can't Google that, man. You're alone. You may have a best friend you're going to, but there's 24 hours in a day when you're alone in this brain. It's those times when even the hardest motherfuckers in the world are looking around for guidance. It's that one mother. Be that one mother. Be that one mother. When even you're saying to yourself, boy, oh, this sucks. I don't want to be here right now. Be that guy who finds the courage and say, you know what, man? Let's do this. Let's do this. Even me right now to talk to you, I'm in the car for an hour getting pumped up because I'm a shy, introverted, leave me alone type of guy. I'm still that mother who is six years old, you know, at a play who can't say his line because I know I'm going to stutter in front of five people. So I walk off stage. That's still me. People think, oh my God, man, you're on a podcast. You look so crazy, so evil. No, I'm trying to be locked into Joe so my mind isn't very off saying, Let's run out the damn door because people <laughs> are watching me on the podcast. I want to open the damn door and get the hell out of here, man. So that's the real me. I did 101 miles in 18 hours and 56 minutes. It's the worst pain I could ever be in in my life. I sat in that tub. She called my mom up. My mom was dating a doctor at the time. The doctor, the doctor said, you need to get him to a hospital now. So she said, I'm taking to the doctor. I said, no, let me sit here and enjoy this pain. I never thought it was humanly possible to do what I did. I went 70 miles, and at 70 miles, I was dead. I was at 100% what I thought was 100%. I went 31 more miles after being in the worst physical shape I've ever been in in my life. It was the most amazing moment of my entire life. I had two heart surgeries also, so I had a hole in it. You're not supposed to have a hole in your heart and be a seal. So the hole was significantly large. Like how big? They say it was as big as a quarter. I'm like, how the hell is it as big as a quarter? Yeah, that's that's a pretty big hole in your heart. Which is amazing that you were able to do all that with a hole in your heart. That's what the doctors were saying. What's your biggest fear in life? I don't care if you believe in God or not. I don't care. Let's say you're God. And we have a big long line of people. And I made to heaven. 75 years old. I'm 300 pounds. I made to heaven. I worked for Ecolab my entire life, spraying for cockroaches. That's what I did. But I'm dead. I'm in heaven now. And you are judging us all now. And I'm next in line. David Goggins. I see my name. I see all this shit. God goes, hey, read this, man. And I'm reading this list and I'm seeing 182 pounds, Navy SEAL, Ranger School, motivational speaker, changing lives. Okay, man, pull up record, all this shit. And I'm like, that's not me, man. And God looks at me and says, that's who you were supposed to be. Let's say there's 10 people in this room and we're all mediocre, but I'm the best of the mediocre people. I now think I'm great. We surround ourselves around people that make us feel great. They tell us what we want to hear. The second we put ourselves amongst the uncommon people, we don't like that feeling, that challenge and feeling that of, of that person who's waking up at 3.30 in the morning and saying, hey, push your shit up, we're going for a run. We don't like that challenge. We like that person who says, hey, you know what, man? I don't feel good today, man. And they say, oh, it's okay, brother. Take the day off, man. We'll get a pizza and shit. watch the game. We like that. We don't want that motherfuckers like this. Hey, man, no, bro. Get your shit on, man. Stop being a punk. We don't want that in our lives. We don't want that person who's constantly challenging our weaknesses. We want that person who's constantly, you know, making us feel nice and good and secure in us. That's the mediocrity of life. If you want to be great, you want to be the best mother ever at what you do you're gonna be misunderstood by everybody because you're gonna be so f obsessed and so driven to get there that's what it takes it takes every second of your life anybody says balance yeah balance is important for a lot of people it is but if you want to go to that edge where people do not like you don't understand you question everything you f do you you've arrived going into combat going into war out of the hundred men that go into war 10 shouldn't even f can be there 80 of them are just targets nine do most of the fighting one is a warrior get back to work. It's time to get back to work. Stop hearing yourself talk. Don't be on social media too much. Cut out all noise. Get back to the mental lab because that's where the knowledge came from. These people who hate on people, I've studied them and I've gained a lot of knowledge from them because I gained a lot of knowledge from myself when I was in that dark place. Back in the day when I was sometimes getting bullied or in a dark place, how sometimes that would have bothered me. How I would want to clap back. I would want to be on there all day explaining myself to people and how now I'm in a place now where I can hear it. I can actually know where it's coming from. So I don't just like listen to it and like make fun of it. I actually study it because I was once that negative person. I was once that person who saw someone successful and didn't see how can I get there. I was like, oh, 
yeah, they're probably cheating or they're probably doing this. I was that negative person because I wasn't there. And I didn't want to work to get there. It's almost like reflecting an older version of you back to yourself. A hundred percent. Lifting weights, people, like, people don't get it, man. It's not like lifting weights. It's like, you know, we go and do like so many reps. Like people go, oh, you're only doing, um, it was like 90 some pounds on the incline. Mother could do five sets to 25 with a superset of push-ups, superset of curls, superset of pull-ups, superset of triceps, superset of what else was it? I forget what else. It's a superset, man. So we're going through lifting lightweight, but for massive, massive amounts of reps. And so you're like totally swollen. And like it's just the, the, the some, some, some of the best workouts in the world between me and him. The biggest question I get is: <clears throat> so when do you rest? <clears throat> when do you recover? Yeah. And I don't want to scare people. But the truth answer is, I don't take any days off. No days. No days. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Well, what is a, a normal day? Normal day for me, a, a normal day. So let's say a light day. Light day. Light day is at least a seven mile run. I will, every, every four, every other day, so about four days a week, um, calisthenics plus gym workout. So I don't do any gym workout without hitting pull-ups, push-ups, I call it nickels and dimes. So like five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, or I'll go, you know, quarters and whatever, like it's like 25 pull-ups or in like 50 push-ups. So I have all these different things I mess up. So I will do weights with calisthenics and every single night I stretch. That's what's disappointing for me, for other people. It's not that I want to live there. I know I can go there. And once again, I know other people can go there. So I guess that's the thing with me is I, is I know I have the ability now to go to a place that's very, very hyper-focused that I can accomplish some pretty amazing feats. Not because I'm amazing, because I allowed my mind to be open-minded for the possibilities of what can I achieve. It takes the growth in your mental aspect, in your spiritual, everything grows because you start feeling better about yourself. Not many things on the planet make you feel good about yourself like getting after it, doing something that challenges you mentally and physically every day. You cannot live in that normal mindset. You must be your best on your worst day. And how you do that is you cannot think of a normal mindset. You cannot have a normal mindset. My big takeaway of life is if you're constantly taking the easy way out, you never go callous your mind. I was a chameleon living in life who could barely get by. So I know that they were taking the normal mindset of people. They weren't talking about the one percenters, the people who want it like there's no tomorrow.